Hey guys, how you doing? Ray here again. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, it's Nitro Kyosho. Well guys, it's uh, coming to a close our summer here in New England. Uh, these things will be going on the shelf probably in another week or two. Uh, so it's time to start doing the simulator. Uh, I did a video a year or so back about simulators. I wanted to do another one because I get a lot of questions about simulators, about the helicopters flying the whole bit. And I really want to talk uh, more about simulators. Uh, some people love them, some don't believe in them. So let's get into detail a little bit more about them. I started flying without a simulator and then I got into simulators after. And that was probably a good and a bad thing because it was a bad as far as I would have loved to have had one of those beforehand, but the good part of it, it let me know how real and realistic these things are so I can tell you guys that out there uh, and help you guys out more. I want to give you some of the top five keys with the simulator here, okay? My little cheat sheets. One, a simulator, guys, it's going to take all the mystery out of everything. Okay, it's going to allow you to learn acrobatics, to learn how to fly, to learn every type of maneuver and what happens and how to perfect it and what happens if you don't do it right and you're not going to obviously do it in the field with a real helicopter. You, you would spend a tremendous amount of money fixing these things to try to learn these things in a field. So it's going to take the mystery out of flying. It's going to save you, the number two thing, it's going to save you hundreds on crashes. Now, people don't want to invest in a $130 simulator or whatever they're going for now, but one potential crash could cost them that. So I don't, I don't get that. Uh, less wear and tear on your helicopter. When I first started, I was going out five, six days a week practicing, 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 and trying to get better, and it wasn't fun, because all I was doing was practicing, and I wasn't going out and having fun. And uh, one thing with that is it takes really, you don't need to go out every day if you have yourself a simulator. You can practice this Monday to Saturday and go out on Saturday afternoon or Sunday and fly once a week. Uh, and learn and abuse this on the computer, the equipment, and not abuse this out in the field. Uh, so there's advantages, but all in all, I mean, it's going to make you a better pilot. It's going to make you an incredible pilot. Now, some of the tips I have here, okay, for you guys, if you're going to use a simulator, it's not a video game. It's as close to real life with one of these things as you're going to get. I guarantee you that. Uh, but the number one thing, I got some stuff written down, is you have to take it seriously, okay? When I fly, and if I have a crash with a thing, I actually get down. I feel bad. I feel like it really happened in real life. Sounds stupid, guys, but take it if you don't take it seriously, you're not going to get anything out of it. You know, don't get on there and just start spinning the sticks and doing stupidities and crazy things. Learn how to fly the helicopter uh, in a normal mode. Learn your four points uh, with the nose out to the sides, towards you. And learn how to become a good sport pilot. Learn how to fly all around the field. Learn your coordinated turns. Before you, the, the biggest mistake guys get getting into this hobby is they want to run right out in the field and start doing acrobatics. They see these pros doing it. And they don't realize these pros have been doing it 10, 15 years. Uh, so it's not going to happen overnight. You have to learn, you know, it's like learning to drive a car. You're going to have to learn how to drive a car before you're going to take a car. You're not going to take a car on a NASCAR track your first day out. We're going to end in disaster. So take this, take this thing seriously. And uh, another thing I have here, I like to use mine for about 20 minutes at a time. Uh, if you're tired at the end of the day, your eyes are tired, uh, 
you might not have a lot of success with it. Do it when you feel good, you feel your mind is healthy, your eyes and everything. Try to pick a time in the day when you're not all dreary and beat and tired. Uh, I find 20 minutes is pretty good. After 20 minutes, my mind starts going rude when I start losing interest. Uh, and you can even break it down into sessions of three minutes, five minutes, take a break, you know, like a real helicopter. You're letting the motor and everything cool down. Uh, experiment with different helicopters. Uh, you can fly airplanes too with this if you want to learn airplanes. But experiment. Don't stay with the same helicopter every day. Uh, this is going to help you eventually make a decision and a choice down the road which ones you like flying better. Uh, they have uh, anything from the small, small little coaxials all the way up to big nitros and, and 700 size helicopters. So uh, don't get stale. That's one thing I'm going to talk about in a couple of the things here. Don't get stale with the models. Uh, there's a lot of sceneries too. Okay, uh, There's sceneries by the water, by the beaches, different things, farmland, uh, even ones with, with snow scenes. Uh, you know, don't get stale, don't get bored. I found, you know, we have long winters here where I am, and I'll find myself getting on there and uh, getting stale and just starting to do the same repetitive thing over and over and over. And then I, I said to myself, you can't do that. You're not going to make any gains like that. So I actually made a little list, okay, practice this, practice that. And it keeps your mind, you know, so you can see it on paper and you say, okay, i got to practice this and i got to do that. So you, you're, it's like homework, you know. You're not just getting on there and doing those same repetitive things. That's when you're going to stop making gains. So definitely break up the sessions. Don't get stale. One of my buddies said to me one time, well, you learn how to fly in there, but how do you learn acrobatics? And I said, they have a demo mode. Uh, Duncan Osborne. Pro Flyer teaches you every kind of acrobatic, pyro flips and, uh, uh, you know, uh, tumbling circuits and rolling circuits and uh, every acrobatic, big bends and every every acrobatic, pie dishes, hurricanes. And he's like, really? They're in this? And I said, yes, there's a section up on the top. You hit demo modes and it teaches you everything, guy. He didn't even know that was in there. Okay. Another fun thing you can do when you're bored, you can go online and fly in other, they set up uh, rooms, like almost like a chat room type thing, and you can go fly with other people and have fun. Uh, they give free updates also, that's why I like uh, Phoenix. Uh, but it's helped me over the years, tremendous. I don't know, being living here in New England and not flying from basically November to March, which is quite a span of time, uh, I don't know if I would have stayed with this hobby. So these things are a savior for people in cold climates, but it's a savior for anybody in any climate. Uh, like I said, I can't stress enough on how much these things will help you. Uh, you know, they give you a nice set of directions that come with it that show you, tell you how to set it up on your computer. If you follow those directions, you should have no trouble at all. And it only takes about five minutes and you'll be up and flying. Uh, these come with or without controllers as do the, uh, the real flight also, I believe, come with or without. Uh, and that's a good thing because I chose to use a, a DX5. Why, do you want to, why would you want to use your regular you know, controller and beat up the gimbals and, and use it and everything? So I have two different... I have a flight, you know, one for the field controller, and I have, uh, you can get the cheap, the DX5s uh, to use on a computer so you're not abusing your everyday controller. Uh, but other than that, guys, I mean, it, it's a godsend, these things. It, it's going to help you tremendous if you take it seriously. If you just get on there and you screw around and mess around, uh, they also have some of the sceneries have indoor gyms you can fly. Uh, but definitely take it seriously. Change up your, your helicopters, your airplanes. Don't get, you know, stale. Uh, learn smaller helicopters how they handle, bigger helicopters how they handle. And, 
you know, a lot of guys will get into this and they'll go from little MCPXs up to 700 sizes. And they think they're confident and, you know, because of the big, big blades, they can hover and they get overconfident and then they have uh, a crash with it and then they find out that it costs, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, to fix. Uh, but they know, they find out that bigger helicopters, uh, you know, handle better than the smaller ones. So they're, they're apt to jump up to those quickly before they're really a, a decent pilot. And uh, they get overconfident with them and they start crashing them. And, uh, you know, just to give you an example, a T-Rex 800 helicopter, the servos are about $180 a piece. Uh, the canopy is about 100 plus, the blade's 150. Uh, you know, a bad crash with a, with a T-Rex 800, guys, you could potentially be looking at almost $1,000 in damage. Uh, you know, you smash a canopy, 100 bucks. Blades, uh, 150. Now you're up to 250. You strip out a couple of servos, 250, <laughs> 400, 600 right there for two servos and the canopy and the blades. So it gets expensive. Uh, it's not a cheap hobby to be involved in. Uh, a lot of guys will try to take the cheap, the cheap way out and buy a lot of clones. Clones have an inferior, the metals aren't good on clones. The bearings aren't good on clones. Uh, the plastics are cheap on the clones. I've tried the, the route when I first got into it and uh, learned quickly. You know, invest in a decent helicopter to begin with, a 450 size, a line T-Rex or something, something of some quality, and uh, you'll be doing less repairs, and uh, I think you'll have more, a, a good fun and not a frustrating time in this hobby, guys. Uh, but definitely, you know, get yourself a simulator, and I think that it's going to tremendously help you guys out there. And uh, I think you'll, you'll be very grateful that you invested the money to get one. So that's all I got to say. I hope that this really makes you guys think. And, and uh, I hope it makes you make the right decision. And I think that uh, you'll be very happy with the end result. If you'd like to subscribe, it's Nitro Kyosho. Thank you for watching.